Apparently, all it takes to replace a global reserve currency is a digital currency alternative just waiting to be released any moment and a deep-seated desire to do so. As regular viewers know, China is leaps and bounds ahead of every other central bank and indeed plans to release a digital yuan in the near future, but for now it supposedly has no interest in dethroning the dollar as the reserve currency, at least according to China. Last summer, the Chinese government launched a pilot program for a digital version of the yuan. The virtual currency ups the ante in the war on cash and creates the potential for the government to track and even control consumer spending. Last week, the digital yuan got a boost when China's biggest online retailer announced it has developed the first virtual platform to accept the Chinese digital currency. The digital currency is nothing more than a virtual banknote or coin that exists in a digital wallet on your smartphone instead of a billfold or a purse. The value of the digital currency is backed by the state, just like traditional fiat currency. JD.com will accept the digital yuan as payment for some products in its online mall. The Chinese government will give away digital yuan to citizens from Suzhou, a city near Shanghai. According to a post on the company website, the city government and the People's Bank of China will issue 200 digital yuan, red envelopes, to 100,000 consumers selected in a lucky lottery. This is the second such digital lottery run by the Chinese central bank. Earlier this year, the PBOC issued 10 million digital yuan to 50,000 randomly selected consumers in Shenzhen. The Chinese government also distributed digital yuan in the form of transport subsidies paid to individuals in Suzhou. According to People's Bank of China Governor Yi Gang, as of November, consumers had spent over 2 billion yuan in digital currency through some 4 million separate transactions. Reuters called the digital yuan, one of the world's most advanced central bank digital currency initiatives, as authorities globally respond to threats from private currencies such as Bitcoin and Facebook's Libra. Proponents of government digital currencies tout their convenience and security. But as Seeking Alpha pointed out, there is a more sinister reason governments are scrambling to develop their own digital fiat. If an official digital yuan was adopted, it would give Beijing a remarkable amount of information about what consumers are spending their money on. The government can easily track digital payments. As Bloomberg put it in an article published when the pilot program was launched, digital currency, offers China's authorities a degree of control never possible with physical money. Specifically, a digital currency might allow the Chinese government to more closely monitor mobile app purchases, accounting for about 16% of the country's GDP. Bloomberg describes just how much control a digital currency could give Chinese officials. The PBOC has also indicated that it could put limits on the sizes of some transactions, or even require an appointment to make large ones. Some observers wonder whether payments could be linked to the emerging social credit system, wherein citizens with exemplary behavior are whitelisted for privileges, while those with criminal and other infractions find themselves left out. China's goal is not to make payments more convenient but to replace cash, so it can keep closer tabs on people than it already does, argues Aaron Brown, a crypto investor who writes for Bloomberg Opinion. This is part of the broader war on physical cash. Governments around the world have quietly waged a war on cash for years. Back in 2017, the IMF published a creepy paper offering government suggestions on how to move toward a cashless society even in the face of strong public opposition. Governments and central bankers claim moving toward a cashless society will help prevent crime and will boost convenience for the average citizen. But the real motivation behind the war on cash is control over you. We got a first-hand look at what happens when governments restrict access to cash when India plunged into a cash crisis after the country's government enacted a policy of demonetization in November 2016. It's easy to shrug off China's experimentation with digital currency as something going on, over there, but US policymakers like the idea too. In fact, they have already toyed with the idea of a digital dollar. A democratic proposal for stimulus payments in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic featured digital currency deposited into digital wallets. Some officials admitted it would potentially allow the government to control how the money was spent. The bottom line is the tighter control governments have over money, the tighter control they have over you. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button 
hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. China made a big splash when it rolled out its digital yuan and it got a boost when China's biggest online retailer announced it has developed the first virtual platform to accept the Chinese digital currency. But China isn't alone in exploring the possibility of digital money. Sweden has developed a digital currency of its own and the European Central Bank is pushing for a digital euro. We're told digital currency should replace unwieldy physical cash. It will be more convenient and help governments stop criminals. But there is a more sinister motive behind this government pivot toward digital currency. Digital currency is nothing more than a virtual banknote or coin that exists in a digital wallet on your smartphone instead of a billfold or a purse. Digital currencies issued by central banks are backed by the state, just like traditional fiat currency. U.S. officials have already toyed with the possibility of a digital dollar. A democratic proposal for stimulus payments in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic featured digital currency deposited into digital wallets. The powers that be will offer all kinds of reasons for moving to a digital currency, but at the root of the movement is the war on cash. It creates the potential for the government to track and even control consumer spending, and it would make it even easier for central banks to engage in manipulative monetary policy such as negative interest rates. Economist Thorsten Pollitt makes this exact point in an article published by the Mises Wire. While many economists praise the digital currency as an innovation, an important and indispensable step in an increasingly digitized world, there are dangers lurking begging this digitalization of government fiat currencies, including a digital euro. As Pollitt put it, the path to becoming a surveillance state regime will accelerate considerably if and when a digital euro is issued. There are two ways the ECB could develop a digital money system. It can be account-based where people hold their digital euros in an ECB account, or it can be token-based where money users receive a digital token that can be transferred from smartphone to smartphone via an app. Either scenario is a nightmare if you care about privacy. As Pollitt points out, hoping for anonymity in payment transactions would be futile in both cases. A look at China probably shows where the journey is headed. The Chinese digital central bank money is supposed to have a controlled anonymity. In other words, only the People's Bank of China, that is, the Chinese Communist Party, should have access to the payment transaction data. The fact that only the government will have access to transaction information should not be comforting. Many people use cash in transactions exactly because they want the transaction to remain anonymous. Governments don't like things they can't control, and that's a big impetus for the war on cash. The government can easily track digital payments made with its own digital currency. As Bloomberg put it in an article published when the Chinese Digital Yuan pilot program was launched, digital currency offers China's authorities a degree of control never possible with physical money. Specifically, a digital currency might allow the Chinese government to more closely monitor mobile app purchases, accounting for about 16% of the country's GDP. Bloomberg describes just how much control a digital currency could give Chinese officials. The PBOC has also indicated that it could put limits on the sizes of some transactions, or even require an appointment to make large ones. Some observers wonder whether payments could be linked to the emerging social credit system, wherein citizens with exemplary behavior are whitelisted for privileges, while those with criminal and other infractions find themselves left out. China's goal is not to make payments more convenient but to replace cash, so it can keep closer tabs on people than it already does, argues Aaron Brown, a crypto investor who writes for Bloomberg Opinion. Pollitt also points out that people often hold cash because it is more liquid. In the event of a power failure such as Texans just experienced, or bank failures, people want to have cash on hand. You can ask Greeks about what happens when banks start limiting your access to cash. Pollitt said it's hard to refute the argument that the ECB wants to take cash out of circulation in order to increase its control over money. If only electronic payments are possible, what little remains of financial privacy will be gone. The citizen becomes completely transparent, much to the liking of the state and its beneficiaries. Pollitt also notes that the ECB would also find it much easier to devalue debt using negative interest rates. As soon as cash has been pushed back or stripped away entirely, Monetary policymakers can implement an uninhibited negative interest rate policy to devalue debt. Customers can no longer get out of the bank balance sheet. The final escape door is then locked.
Paulet doesn't think a digital euro can win against cash in the marketplace. The government will have to make cash more unattractive, by raising the costs of cash by increasing fees at ATMs or through upper limits for cash payments, or through social stigmatization of cash, keywords, money laundering, terrorist financing, etc. Governments around the world have quietly waged a war on cash for years. Back in 2017, the IMF published a creepy paper offering government suggestions on how to move toward a cashless society even in the face of strong public opposition. Governments and central bankers claim moving toward a cashless society will help prevent crime and will boost convenience for the average citizen. But the real motivation behind the war on cash is control over you. Ultimately, the digital euro, and more broadly speaking, the entire war on cash is about control. And Paulette warns that is in one of the mile markers on the road to outright communism. As is well known, in their Communist Manifesto, 1848, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels named 10, measures, the implementation of which would lead to communism. The fifth measure reads as follows, centralization of credit in the hands of the state by a national bank with state capital and exclusive monopoly. The issuance of a digital euro and the resulting consequences are undoubtedly another crucial step in bringing the Marxists' vision of their desired revolution to fruition. The death of the dollar is the end of America's financial order. The purchasing power of a $1 bill has dropped from 100 cents in 1913 to less than 4 cents today. Money is a store of value. The dollar is not money. Money is gold, and gold is money. Everyone in the upper echelon of global finance knows this. It's the let's pretend it isn't their heffalump in the vault. One such heffalump aware influencer is Mark Carney. He is the outgoing governor of the Bank of England and oft times chairman of various old capitalism committees at the privately owned Bank for International Settlements in Basel, Switzerland. Carney also has a posing role on the G20's Financial Stability Board and is an admirer of gold, particularly Asian gold. Speaking recently at a bankers conference at Jackson Hole, Wyoming, USA, Mark Carney said that it might soon be time to junk the US dollar as the global reserve currency and move to something better something which is less obviously toxic to global financial well-being. Sometimes, apparently, it is okay to applaud a banker for offering a blinding glimpse of the obvious to close friends. A digital currency could dampen the domineering influence of the US dollar on global trade. A new international financial architecture would develop around the new digital currency. This cryptocurrency would displace the dollar's current dominance in credit markets. And reducing the influence of the US on the global financial cycle would help to reduce the volatility of capital flows to emerging market economies. According to research conducted by the Bank of England in London, the USA now accounts for only 10% of world trade. Despite this, in 2019, over 70% of global GDP still uses the US dollar as an anchor currency, a reserve currency. This is an absurd state of affairs in both geopolitical and geofinancial terms. Root and branch reform is urgently needed. It is said that new systems are ready to run. Gold will be an important factor in the coming international changes. So will asset-backed cryptocurrencies. Banksters abused the trust of the people and gambled in the stocks and derivatives, and lost trillions. Central banksters abused the trust of the people and created money out of thin air and gave to the banksters to keep them afloat. Result. All the surplus produced in the past decade has been silently absorbed by these parasites, and still there is inflation. Now even a repudiation of the loans or a debt jubilee will not benefit those who have been bankrupted already. The true power of the dollar reserve currency is the political clout that it gives us, which makes everything economic possible. The same political clout has enabled the US to put sanctions on anyone from Russia to Iran to Venezuela. It has allowed the US to dominate the SWIFT and the world banking system. The reserve currency isn't a blessing, it's a curse. Study Triffin's Dilemma. The only reserve money there should be is gold and silver. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.